Splatoon 3 trailer breakdown. All right, I can do this. Yesterday, there was the first trailer for Splatoon 3, and Nintendo also tweeted some things to confirm details. Let's take a look. First thing we see is the Switch logo showing that the game will come out for Nintendo Switch next year. And given that the game is planned for 2022, I also doubt there will be a Switch 2 in that time, or if there is, will be a simultaneous release on both consoles. The trailer starts in an arid wasteland desert type location. You've got some rusted out subway cars that are similar to the subways and cars we've seen in the first two games. The camera then pans over to our inkling, who looks to be around the same age as characters in Splatoon 2. Based on their appearance, they may be some type of scavenger living out here in the wasteland, or they may just be hanging out. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting some serious Ray and BB-8 vibes out here. All the gear they're wearing is completely new as far as I can tell. They're wearing a cloak, and the last time we saw a character wearing a cloak was Agent 3 in Octo Expansion, though that one was black and not brown. I don't think this cloak will be an actual in-game item you can wear since they take it off as soon as the trailer starts. They remove the mask and glasses separately, though those will probably be one gear item in the actual game, and we get to see our customization options. It looks like you'll be able to either choose to play as an Inkling or an Octoling right from the start in this one. You can pick your skin tone again, and you can change the color of your eyes, pupils, and iris, the inside and the outside this time. Still TBD if you'll have any heterochromia options. It looks like all the hair options from the first two games are back, and what's great is that they're not gender locked this time. Any squid can have any squid hair, any octo can have any octo hair. You can pick your pants, which are also ones coming back from the first game, which confirms there most likely won't be a fourth ability slot you can equip. They'll only be there just for show as you venture out into this apocalyptic world. Speaking of the apocalypse, Small Fry! Last scene, there were enemies in Salmon Run, Splatoon 2's horde mode, and they were responsible responsible for multiple game overs. However, this one is friendly to you, and you can customize it. I don't know if this is like a baby duckling or a how to train your dragon situation, or if the threat that faces the world now is so great that squid and salmon have to team up, but either way, it follows you around in this section. It's unclear what role they'll play in the gameplay, if any. We don't see them in the multiplayer footage later, but they do follow you around in this beginning area, so maybe they'll be in the single player as a helper or an escort mission, or just in this one section. Your character walks through this area, which Nintendo's Twitter has confirmed to be called the Splatlands, a play on Badlands, I assume. This area has an intense sun and harsh environment, which can be seen by the Inkling's hair tentacles drying up at the end. We can also see the look of the new Ink Tank, which instead of the cylinder shape from the first two games, is more of a flat Capri sun pouch that you have for lunch in third grade. I think it's supposed to be like one of those camelbacks you'll see distance runners and hikers use, or maybe it's supposed to resemble an IV drip, maybe a sly reference to Mad Max Fear Road where out in the desert they had to use people's blood bags to survive, or maybe I'm looking too much into it, I'm bad at trailer breakdowns. It also looks like it might have less capacity than the original ink tank, so maybe hydration is more scarce in this harsh environment. You and your salmon buddy walk past a destroyed and upside down Eiffel Tower. At first I thought it might be Inkopolis Tower, or perhaps Tokyo Tower, and I looked at the architecture of all of them and the angles of the beams, and no, this is definitely the Eiffel Tower, or at least a replica of it. As a refresher, Splatoon takes place thousands of years into the future after sea levels rose and humanity died out, but it's unclear what happened in this specific area. One thing we do have to remember is that the results of the final Splatfest affect the story in the next game. In Splatoon 1, the final Splatfest was Kylie vs. Marie and Marie 1, so in Splatoon 2, Callie gone missing and had team up with Marie to find her. In Splatoon 2, the final Splatfest was Chaos vs. Order and Team Chaos won. We can even see a little Salmonid on Team Chaos. Did Chaos winning result in whatever happened here? Or did this happen in the distant past before even the events of Splatoon 1? Maybe during a war for resources while land became scarce from rising sea levels. Hopefully we'll get an explanation in Splatoon 3. This section also looks like gameplay instead of a cutscene. This is most likely the start of the game where you play through a tutorial section to learn the controls before you make it to the town where you'll start most of the time. You arrive at a train station and the train is reminiscent of the one from Octopus expansion as they have similar colors and have graffiti on the outsides, but you can tell by the arrangement of the lights and windows that this is in fact a different train. However, similar to the Octo Expansion train, you see multiple different species riding the train, approaching the city that gradually comes into focus in the background. I'll assume that the blurry city is where we eventually end up, since the train makes a pulling in sound and then the screen fades into the city. The city on the border of the Splatlands is called Splatsville, and will most likely serve as your hub. In the first game, Ingopolis Plaza was loosely based off of Shibuya Crossing in Tokyo. In the second game, Ingopolis Inkopolis Square is based off of a Tokyo shopping district, and in Splatoon 3, it looks like this area is more based off of a Tokyo residential area. Splatsville is a relatively new city and is referred to as the City of Chaos, referencing the events of Splatoon 2's Final Fest. While Inkopolis Plaza and Square were located fairly close to each other, roughly a 20 minute walk according to the art book, you could even see the plaza from the square, Splatsville is said to be located very far from Inkopolis. You can see everyone has an air conditioning unit in their window, probably to help with the arid environment. The buildings resemble Tokyo apartments, which has led some people to speculate that maybe apartments will be a feature in the next game. Ever since the opening of the first game where an apartment is literally the first thing you see when you turn the game on, apartments have been a feature that some players have really wanted. But as someone who lives in an apartment right now, I'll tell you, you're not missing much. In some of the pictures and footage, we can see a few spots and other inklings hanging out, and the ones you can see are wearing clothes from Splatoon 2. You can spot the plaza post box in this shot, so we'll probably see plaza post return again. We can also see the building will most likely enter to go into battles, as it has the Squid Force battle logo on it. Turf Wars have been confirmed to return, but no new 
news on the other four ranked battle modes, though I'm sure they'll return too. The building here is most likely the weapons shop, since we can see an Ammo Knights logo outside of it if we look closely. So Sheldon will probably return as well, and maybe even an eventual Sheldon's Picks Volume 3. We can see a plane fly overhead, similar to what would happen occasionally in the previous game, so this plane is flying a lot lower to the ground. We're also underneath subway tracks, so presumably a train will occasionally pass through here. Like the large statues in the first two games, there's a new snake with a crown. I don't know if this is reference to something in real life, please let me know if it is. This golden building on the left across from the weapons shop might be the replacement for the shoal where you do local battles, or a shopping area for gear, or maybe something completely new, but it's obscured by the truck so it's hard to tell. We also don't see a squid dance pad anywhere. Interestingly, even though they're on the subway with you, your salmon buddy isn't visible here, though it may be because the camera's angled up and your buddy is Vic V on height and too short to appear on camera. Also the drum beat crescendo that plays in the trailer is almost the exact same one that plays every time you boot up Splatoon 1. Now for actual gameplay. The new map we see in action is again in the Splatlands. The stages in the previous two games were mostly in urban environments, however this one is out in the great outdoors. Splatoon 3 battles are confirmed to still be 4v4, but instead of spawning on a spawn point, you spawn in on spawn drones that look like ice cream machines. These must not be the same ones from McDonald's because these ones actually work. Because of the dry environment, they're probably not able to funnel ink to a spawn point, they have to remotely bring their own spawn. The player is able to point at a specific spot on the map and fly in that way. Based on the angle of the shot available, there'll still most likely be a spot on your side of the map, so you can't just drop it on the opponent's side. And it looks like an icon will still appear where you're going to land, so other players, including your opponents, will still be able to see it. I'm not so sure if you can move the drone itself around before firing in, but in the footage it shows all four inklings on each team all firing from around the same spot, so I'm guessing no. This new feature probably just exists to help prevent spawn camping, which, if it's ever happened to you, it sucks! The characters that spawn in all appear to be wearing new gear but many of their clothes are from existing brands already in the first two games. Some of the new clothing, such as this helmet, is inspired by the new harsh environment that they now have to survive in. As for the new bow and arrow class weapon that you have at the start, there's no official name listed for it yet, and barely any gameplay of it is shown, but it's confirmed to have three shots of ink that fire at once. Makes sense, Splatoon 2 introduced duelies for two shots at once, Splatoon 3 introduced the triple shot bow from Breath of the Wild. The other weapons we see are all returning weapons from the first two games, but with slightly tweaked looks, probably to help differentiate between similar weapons. For example, the range blaster now has a curved part to help distinguish it from the regular blaster. The 96 gal has a new nozzle attachment, probably to help to separate it from the 52. I assume a weapon like the Rapid Blaster Pro will probably look different to separate it from the Rapid. The Splattershot's new design is now yellow to match the game's logo, but most of the tank looks like it matches the player's ink color, so the only recurring design between matches will be the yellow little spaghetti string on it. The Dynamo Roller looks more mechanical. The E-Leader, which looks different again, will probably be the E-Leader 5K this time. I'm happy to see them give new looks to returning weapons, as Splatoon 2 only gave new looks to a handful of old weapons. Even the sloshing machine is back. Yay, I love the sloshing machine. The only weapon class that didn't return from Splatoon 1 was the dual squelcher, and that's because it was replaced by the dually squelchers. Oh, and I guess technically the E-Leader 3K became the E-Leader 4K. The new special weapon is actually an old special weapon from Splatoon 1, the Inkazooka. This time, instead of firing big ink tornadoes, it looks like it's firing long-range lasers, and then in the image, they sort of look like modified suction bombs that explode on contact. It's hard to tell from the less than one second of footage. But there is the suck and seize scroll in Splatoon 2 They talked about how the specials in Splatoon 1 were banned because they were too powerful, so maybe some of the older specials with modifications will be coming back. Or maybe the new threat everyone is facing is so severe that they need to bring out the big guns. There's a crab? It goes from ball form to crab form and walks. It could be a new auto bomb. I think it might be a new sub weapon, but the tweet only says new special weapon, so it might actually be a new special, or it could be a new game mode entirely. There's two new moves that will presumably be available to every weapon. The squid roll allows them to leap and twirl out of their ink, sort of like a dually dodge roll, but you do it while swimming. And the squid surge, which allows them to quickly swim up ink covered walls and jump out at the top, basically a higher jump. It's unclear how often you'll be able to do these moves, if there's a cooldown, or if it costs ink like a dually dodge roll, or if you have to pick one or the other, or if you always have both available. The music that plays during this section is a remix of Splatak, the main theme from the first game. The only version of Splatak that played during Splatoon 2 was the Agent 3 boss fight in Octo Expansion. I think given the harshness of the new environments and clothing, and the raw rawness? Raw, raw dacity of the new music arrangement, I think Splatoon 2 is trying to go for a more savage tone. Finally, the release date is shown to be 2022. When in 2022 is anyone's guess. However, the first two games both came out in summer months, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one does too. You also hear the bubble sound effect at the end of the trailer that plays when you turn on Splatoon 2. 2022 might sound kind of early since many people are still playing Splatoon 2 on their Nintendo Switch, but shooting games usually don't have a ton of time between releases, and in summer 2022, it will have been five years between games. While I do think the game will definitely come out in 2022, I also think given how little in-motion gameplay was shown, there's still a lot of work to be done. While it was an exciting trailer, what all do we actually see? We saw customization options, 
options, some walking, sitting on a subway, a little bit of town, spawning animation, and some gameplay that was cut up so much we could barely see anything. Can't even tell how the new weapon shoots. That being said, Splatoon 2 was developed in about a year, after the updates to Splatoon 1 were done. So I think Summer 22 is still a realistic time frame. Many members of the team behind Splatoon also work on Animal Crossing, so assuming they started full development sometime in 2020, that would give Splatoon 3 over two years of development time. Also, game trailers take multiple weeks to make, and this trailer could have been made at any point last year and we're just now seeing it. That also being said, when it launched, Splatoon 2 felt more like Splatoon 1.5. The only new mode was Salmon Run, and the only new weapon type were the Duelies. It wasn't until Umbrella, the rest of the old weapons, several brand new weapons, X-Rank, and Octo Expansion came out, that Splatoon 2 actually felt like a full sequel. While I do like Splatoon's model of periodically releasing new updates to help keep the game fresh, I hope there is more content available at launch for Splatoon 3 than there was when each of the first two games came out. But again, I'm still excited for the next game. This trailer is intended more to get you excited about the announcement than what's in the trailer itself. I'm particularly curious about what wasn't in the trailer, specifically all the named characters. Any character in the previous game who had a name is not on this trailer. No singers, no sellers, no actual expansion trailers, no Judd, no Little Judd, no Great Zapfish. So don't be surprised if for the third game in a row, the single player involves you finding the Great Zapfish again. Oh boy! This stuff will probably be revealed in the new trailers and periodically on the Squid Research Lab on Splatoon's official Tumblr of all places, leading up to the release to build up the hype. You don't want to show everything all at once, you know? But the most important thing missing so far, no news! Thanks for watching. What are you most excited about in Splatoon 3? Let me know in the comments, and also if you saw anything in the trailer that I missed. And you know what the best way to get ready for Splatoon 3 is? By getting good at Splatoon 2, so check out this playlist of weapon guides I made on all sorts of weapons, and maybe you'll learn a thing or two, I don't know. And I make all sorts of videos on all sorts of games, where I thankfully talk a lot slower. So in case you're new here, welcome! So make sure to pull back that inky bowstring and hit that subscribe button three times so it'll be up to date with more.